Yetzi. Um, he is working with a Harvard research group. And so thank you for being with us, Joe. Thanks for having me. All right. So first off, tell me a little bit about your company and research group and kind of just, just a little bit of general information. Uh, so I work um, at the lab of George Church in Harvard Medical School's Department of Genetics. And it is a large biological sciences academic setting. And we do a lot of really cool stuff um, sort of related to genetics and synthetic biology and sort of engineering of novel biological systems for plastic, medic, you know, other medical purposes and industrial and just basic research purposes. So a lot of cool stuff going on at the lab. Very cool. Very cool. So how does, how does your lab kind of fit into the larger genetic research space? So I would say that a lot when, when you think about sort of like people um, sort of in my field, like molecular biogenetics and other kinds of fields, think they always think of sort of the, the binary between this academic jobs and there are industrial jobs. And I think that what our lab is really good at, uh, while it is in an academic setting, it often can um, access sort of an incubator space for really cool um, bioengineering projects that end up becoming companies. And one of them, the name, the name, I don't remember the name of it, but there was one that just left the lab. And there was another fall that I do remember was called um, eGenesis. Two months have been, um, I think, two or three startups. So sort of a cool industrial and academic hybrid space. Very interesting. Cool. So what is your specific role on the team? So there are a lot of different projects going on in this lab just because it's so big. Um, I think it's when you, as far as um, biological science labs goes, this is really quite large. They sort of split the lab into um, a bunch of different projects that usually will have a couple of postdocs and maybe a graduate student, a uh, fellow like me who is involved in that. And I work on two different projects. So one of them is on woolly mammoth de-extinction project. So we're working on analyzing the genomes of elephants and woolly mammoths, differences between them, and, and um, engineering woolly mammoth traits into Asian elephant cells to study the functions in cell culture and potentially um, create an animal someday. And on the other side, we're working on engineering one to create a a strain that can actually attack wild type herpes simplex one in cell culture. Wow, so fascinating. Sort of, yeah. So basically so what I'm hearing is that is that you are working on Jurassic Park, basically. Yeah, that is one of the things. So, all right, what is the our, what is the background? I forgot to ask of people listening. This is a, um it's it's uh, kind of general. It's, it's, bio it's, jobs or I mean it's it's open to the to the general kind of Stanford community. Probably people that are watching it are gonna be more on, on the bio focus, but yeah. Okay, just wanted to So how many how many years yeah, yeah, yeah. So how many years away do you think we are before you could you could engineer a woolly mammoth kind of hybrid? I mean, I think we have the technology mostly to do it. Um I think that that as far as doing doing all the genome comparisons like biomatic bioinformatically, like that stuff we've sort of been doing and I think we've done and we're hoping to get a paper out on that soon and as far as the actual putting the changes into cells go i think that's probably five plus years out i think our pi is a little more optimistic and we're shooting for two i yeah. think it looks like it's going to be and then of course there's the actual product the actual um issue of getting um getting a viable embryo out of that and i think that step of the project that uh we haven't quite gotten to yet gotcha Gotcha. So what did you do at Stanford um, to prepare you for this type of for, for this type of role and this type of job starting kind of when you were a freshman to, to your senior year? Yeah. So when I was a freshman, I came in thinking I was going to be a bioengineering major. I think I really liked the prospect of what bioengineering could do. So you could sort of the sort of tweaking of, um, of cells, of proteins, of biological systems to sort of achieve novel tasks cool um i think i would to be honest was a little bit disenchanted with some of the with all with some of the coursework because i think at the time i was hoping to go into medicine and thought that it was a bit too much to be doing um pre-med and an engineering degree um, i ended up deciding i wanted to uh, um, 
sort of during my, like uh, the summer after my freshman year. So I did an overseas seminar and a sophomore college that both let me travel and experiences sort of inspired me to pursue the more interdisciplinary and, and based major in human biology. And I did a lot of um, infectious diseases and public health, some research that got me involved into the, the virology work that I do now. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So later on, I got later on, I think I sort of got drawn back into the molecular biospace. But that was I think I got to that point by sort of seeing um, some of the big problems that could be addressed by really small scale solutions. Gotcha. OK, so switching gears a little bit, let's talk about kind of the, the research group and the, and the company or the institution of Harvard kind of as a whole. So what is the culture like in, in your research, in your research group? Um, maybe some 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 good things, some bad things, some neutral things. Just kind of generally, what what's your um what, what what's your sense of the culture? Yeah, uh, um, lab in particular, it's um it's big. I think when racial work is going on there. And I think it's really a very collaborative space. There are all of the projects sort of run by, you know, multiple postdocs or grad students. There's an every week. Um, and, and Guy is there on four labs and gives questions about the work place is sort of doing feedback about their work. gotcha gotcha okay so um along those same lines um what opportunities um are provided by the research group or by um harvard uh, as an institution to to employees Um, obviously the fantastic for doing all kinds of like places to culture sort. So that there's a part that is sort of shared by all, um, all the departments of the medical school because it's such a, it's a, it's a, we're obviously a world-class, um, education and research institution. So there's all kinds of resources available for, uh, doing some really great science there. There's other departments, um, or other labs in the medical school that are equally fantastic and it's been a great place to collaborate with some of these other groups as well. So speaking from my experience, I've um, done some collaborative work with in the department and that. Um, Fantastic. I know, yeah. So as far as opportunities for uh, current go, um, I think that um, that's sort of lab specific, depending on where in the medical school you want to go, I think are a little bit more strapped for funding than others. So some of the more well-funded labs are able to take summer interns. And that usually, that's how I got my start there, was I, I um, was hired as a summer intern. And then I, after graduating, I got hired back as a full-time research fellow. But there are all kinds of, third, usually with, with science, it also is helpful if you bring in your own funding. There's all kinds of fellowships um, and NSF, NIH, and all those things you can apply to. Get even more likely that the lab that you want to work at will be able to take you in. Gotcha. So, so what advice would you have for um, for Stanford students wanting to wanting to to pursue maybe um, a position at Harvard um, in the medical school? First of all, do you know if, if there are any open positions within within your lab group or within any other labs that that you know of? And how would kind of graduating seniors and also potential interns be be, be able to get to to get involved? Yeah, I I believe that that that's been. Uh... The, the uh, availability of spaces for interns has been kind of in flux. I think the past couple months we're figuring out some, uh, we're getting through some highs and lows of funding, but I do believe that there will be, um, there are going to be some, but the most important thing I think for trying to get into an academic lab space after graduating is um, it's all about context and talking to um, uh, the way I found this job was by talking to a professor of a class that I had um, as a senior at Stanford. I wasn't really sure what I was doing afterwards and uh, we were talking about my interests, and he happened to know the PI at Harvard, George. He he set the two of us up, and George ended up taking me into his lab. 
in academia, the connections are obviously huge. Um, so I'd see, so I'd make sure that you talk to all of the, you know, faculty and maybe other students that, um, especially older, like grad students that you have, your classes or whatever your lab space is. And then looking around, um, so looking at papers and seeing like what kind of research do you like and where is all this work being done? And then I can sort of get you an idea of what kinds of academic labs that you really want to join. Gotcha. Gotcha. Fantastic. All right. Let's, let's end with some quick hitters here. What is your favorite part of the job? Hmm. I really like obviously working on the woolly mammoth stuff. Uh, it's, that's um, I think and something I've been fascinated with for a while. The idea of studying of, biology species i mean yeah, it's very jurassic park-esque kind of but that's definitely one it's one of my favorite movies ever um that's so that's been awesome it's definitely like a dream job to be able to do something cool like that so every day knowing they can get a little bit closer to um making a big impact like that it's pretty cool gotcha what did you want to be when you grew up i think i always knew i wanted to be a scientist so what what kind of what 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 kind of inspired that? Um, I honestly, it was from uh, from I I think my science teachers in elementary school were obviously a huge influence, and watching old Bill Nye the Science Guy VHS tapes when I was little, uh, <laughs> that was nice. those were some really early influences on me, and I guess it, I guess it just never left. But uh, I've always been interested in doing science, and I'm hoping that that, that can continue into the future. Very nice. And finally, who is the coolest person that you've met on the job so far? Ooh, I'd have to say the PI George. He is um, obviously if you haven't if you haven't looked into George Church, if you're into biology, he's a big name. Um, he's super cool. He has had a very much career both, both in an academic and uh, in an industrial space. Um, he's also very he's also like very good to talk to. He's for being a celebrity presser in a huge lab. Um, I, so I, I think that he's been, uh, he's been really great to be able to get to know. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on, on this episode of Unplugged with Stanford, Joe. Um, if you could just stay on the line. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end the broadcast here. Um, thank you for everyone watching, and we will see you next time on our next episode of Unplugged with Stanford.